Prema Gopalan from uh, Swayam Shikshan Prayo, known as SSP. We are located in rural India, and I'm speaking about the Maratwada region in uh, Maharashtra, Western India. SSP has worked to empower grassroots women's collectives to be part of mainstream local economies and to tackle issues around agriculture, food security, livelihoods and enterprise, and improve the well-being of their families through health and nutrition initiatives as well, impacting more than 200,000 women who are in the forefront as farmers and entrepreneurs and leaders, the Community Resilience Fund, which I'm going to speak about, really evolved as an innovative, flexible financial mechanism that women from these groups could draw upon as and when is needed to implement innovations in agriculture, livelihoods, and to protect natural resources. So what's unique about our approach is that um, poor women who have never been considered as farmers are looked at as agriculture decision makers. And this spills, spills over to their families and communities. Women uh, who handle the Resilience Fund have really shifted their view as not only farmers, but as planners and experts in local adaptation in the climate hit regions. So they have been able to leverage funds from the government, from banks, and very recently to tackle the uh, climate and COVID risks that they faced in their communities and build sustainable community networks which work in collaboration with the government. The uh, Community Resilience Fund locally is managed at uh, two levels. One at the rural community level, where women within a self-help group or savings and credit group actually evaluate what they need according to the seasons in each of the districts. The federation meet to decide who which group would get the loans. And they educate the group on how the loan really works. So the decisions are taken entirely by the federation leaders and the fund managers. So the fund is flexible enough to recognize that groups could make mistakes, they could fail, and the fund would support them to uh, try again and succeed. When the local governments notice that women are actually solving problems, they are the problem solvers in issues. 
which the local government is responsible for. This has often resulted in the women leaders involved in the fund being included as part of decision making in their communities and made the distribution of resources much more equitable. As a result, we've seen that often the most vulnerable households in these communities who often are not part of community decision mechanisms have started being included in uh, community workshops and meetings which are attended by the local officials. And their voices can be heard quite clearly now. Through the Resilience Fund, we had invested in women's uh, capacities and their leadership. And on the other hand, they were able to demonstrate that they could handle finance in very transparent and accountable ways. And these leaders were called upon through citizen meetings to be elected in, in their communities. The uh, first recommendation that I would have for policymakers around, around the call is to start walking the talk on climate finance unless there is money in the hands of the most vulnerable, it is not possible that these women's groups can demonstrate what they know already. My second uh, recommendation would be to include uh, women's collectives as key stakeholders as partners on the table when climate adaptation is discussed. The third most uh, important recommendation is that if we want climate adaptation to be socially inclusive, we need to first include women from these groups, from the vulnerable households, empower them with resources and funds, and then witness the transformative change that they are able to bring 